So guys, uh, this is the third part and the last part of Helene Kix's love of the love of the Medusa. So I have covered a whole understanding of uh, what post-structuralism is about or what is the pre-post-structuralism all about. And then I have covered uh, the a video showing the concerns of, of uh, you know, uh, Helene Kixo or Helene Sixo. So, um, and, and after that, I published the first half of the love of the Medusa and its analysis and themes. And this is the last part of on Helene Sixo so, and the love of the Medusa. So, starting with uh, the important uh, you know term coined by Helene Sixo and the term is Ecriture Feminine. Ecriture Feminine I will tell you all about that term as well. So Helene Sixo says that most women write and speak and use language from masculine position because to speak a woman need a stable system of meanings and thus she adopts the phallus or patriarchal system of language. So there is little or no feminine in in men's writing in women's writing if they use the language made in the system of the male. Because in the symbolic order everything is divided in the symbolic order based on you know fellow gocentric system. Everything is divided into binary pairs where one thing is superior to the other and other thing is inferior. So males are inferior to women, you know, the male slash female, white slash black, that binaries. So when it comes to masculine and feminine uh, slash feminine, the feminine is repressed one and unfortunately women has the only chance to write in it how now um, that solution that solution does uh, so what solution does uh, you know so what kind of solution that Helene uh, Sixo provides here she coins a term Ecriture Feminine which is uh, defined as feminine style of writing which is not like that of masculine phallogocentric one. So uh, in the next slide, which is uh, what is that ecritore is ec so ecritore feminine is possible in poetry because novels, the novels are, you know, uh, they are the, they are filled with, they are the allies of, you know, representationalism and uh, realism. So, um, so it represents stable language and where one signifier has only one signified and there are strict meaning of every word. But in poetry, as we have discussed earlier in, in, in Derrida's notion, center of notion and, and the videos um, on, you know, um, Helene Sixo and post-structuralism, it says that poetry that the language of poetry is free. It is in metaphorical languages. It is in metaphorical language and metaphorical language and poetic language has more than one meaning. So, so the chains of signifiers are free and free floating in poetry and there are their meanings are less stable and there are multiple meanings of every word. So moving towards the third slide, what is an other? plus point of poetry which is the suppressed or repressed desires <clears throat> so i will tell you that uh, sexo says that poetry is closer to the unconscious and lacan says that the unconscious is structured like chains of signifier which never rest nor attach to any signified so poetry being closer to the unconscious is according to sigmund freud is closer to the repressed desires because in the unconscious we have repressed desires all the desire which we which which, which we don't repress which which we don't express so we take them into the unconscious so the unconscious is the resting place of the you know uh, repressed desires and for sixo the female body 
and female sexuality has been repressed since ages so poetry tell us all about the repressed desires so but sexo says that poetry is a form of a creature feminine but all poets she cites as feminine writers are men so going towards next slide which is that uh, like which is the feminine you know feminine uh, the which is the feminine writing as a rupture how does the feminine you know their writings the creature feminine if you have watched my video on derrida's notion of center and deconstruction remember that i mentioned there that the words such as rupture and break etc so these words mean a kind of rupture within a system or a kind of break in a system which deconstructs the previous system and concludes that 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 previous system was not an absolute system but a construct by society or a school of thought and in the case of for example helene sixos feminine writing serve as a as a rupture or a break it means that the feminine writing deconstruct and you know a question or breaks down the patriarchal system of writing because patriarchy and writing is under the system is a construct or a system built by past societies and is not an absolute system of writing because there exist many more other system as well and i hope that uh, you know it is clear to you now what i meant by the construct and rupture etc so let me explain further if you have not clear that point yet so um so sixus says that the rupture is same as derrida's concept of it like derrida's concept of deconstruction or rupture so rupture is a place or point where the totality of a system breaks down and we can see it as a system or a, or a construct rather than simply as an absolute truth for example let me explain with another example so since ages people thought that religion is an absolute truth or something like that uh, or like it is something that uh, could provide them solution for everything but after philosophies of david hume voltaire and you know uh, the existential phil philosophies of of you know uh, of kekegard and nietzsche and and schopenhauer and etc and 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 the theory of darwin and you know the discovery of several other things like the discovery of the dead bodies of you know the skeletons of and the fossils of dinosaurs which says that uh, the world is not made in 6 days and which negates the you know the idea of bible that the world is made in 6 days or 7 days or something like that so so people start thinking that religion was a system constructed by someone's mind and can't prove provide absolute or permanent answers so sexo's critique on phallocentric system is symbolic order suggest that the in symbolic order suggest that you know uh, the phallocentric structure is also constructed and is not something inevitable essential or unchangeable or absolute and the feminine writing are going to deconstruct it so feminine writing and gay lesbian writings are going to deconstruct it but let us understand that how is uh, how is ecotone feminine a transformative or something that deconstruct it works on two level according to helene sexo first is when individual woman write herself in this way she discovers for herself that what her body feels like and how to write about body in language in this way a woman found find out her own sexuality which is her own body and this also helps her finding ways to write about her pleasure or joyousness joyousness is a french word i have told you in early part of the the love of the medusa whereas the second level is when women speak or write their own bodies 
the structure of language itself will be changed as women will become active bodies and not just a passive thing all the time and this will change their position as a subject so this happens when a woman who write will be creating a new signifying system which allow more play or multiple meaning more fluidity than the existing single phallocentric you know patriarchal symbolic order so keeping these both levels in mind look at poetry each word in poetry means different different meanings you know and there is multiplicity of meanings and is more fluidity than rigidity that is in uh, then then you know that the more fluidity and more you know the uh, poetry language is more fluid and whereas the prose language is more rigid so so this all subvert clarity and rationality which derrida calls logocentrism so uh, so uh, feminine language uh, or ecritor feminine uh, provides irrationality prefers irrationality and chaos over rationality and order and it is a whole new dimension to the world to understand the world western thought has till now uh, found the world interpreted the world only through you know rational dimension what if we start perceiving it in terms of irrationality so uh, next slide which says that uh, you know that uh, that males writing that uh, which has that ecritory feminine bring us closer to the real and the real of the lacan of lacan so male writings are near to the symbolic order which is totally opposite to a lacan idea of real that ecrita but ecritory feminine bring us closer to the real for the understanding of the real you must watch the my video on you know lacan's idea of the real and the link is in the description below so a woman who speaks does not produce stability which is required in the symbolic order so this stability or rigidity of meaning is also characterized as linearity and objectivity there is something wrong with the you know phallocentric symbolic system that it rejects subjectivity and the more human expression in human beings and ecritory feminine is going to add subjectivity to this as well because ecritory feminine deconstruct the phallocentric or objective language phallocentric system creates binaries and superiority and inferiority such as the white and black slash white slash black etc so fem ecritory fe feminine which deconstructs uh, when deconstructing the phallocentric system erase all these division and binaries and bring or an individual closer to the women to to the closer to the real which is the main man mother's body and breast and satisfaction and the union with the maternal where there was no lack or no separation so how will you distinguish ecritory feminine or feminine writing from other writings so to distinguish ecritory fe fe feminine or feminine writing so how do we distinguish i am talking again and sorry for the disruption of sound here and there because there are some technical issues and with me in that time when i was recording so coming back to our topic to distinguish how do we distinguish the the feminine writings or ecritore feminine from those of the other so to distinguish ecritore feminine or feminine writings from other type of writing sixu associate feminine writing with the non existing linguistic modes because ecritory feminine or feminine writings are something that are expressed beyond language so they are not existing they are existing non linguistic modes so explaining it further writing here in the second point ecritory feminine is milk a song a rhythm a pulse but no words 
it is something connected with bodies and with beats and with movement of bodies but not something like representational language that of the phallocentric symbolic order so way towards next slide which is a criteria feminine is con con conceived by the marginals or the outlaws peoples or the people who are not thought to be normal like bisexual homosexual lesbian gays and women on some point as well so a criteria feminine promotes being like being slippery or being fluid and one cannot define the practice of a criteria feminine all right so there is no definition to it because to define is to limit to pin something down or to make something fixed or to make it stable or a or make it a stable or rigid system or structure is to define or limit the boundaries of that thing all right <clears throat> sixu says in third point that electore an electore feminine is fluid for all this because it resists or escapes any definition and can't be theorized encoded or understood but it does not mean that it does not exist something you you can perceive or something that you can touch or see or speak or you know you know you, you use doesn't mean that that doesn't make the other thing which we you don't see or don't use it doesn't mean that the other thing doesn't exist it exists on some other level all right <clears throat> so a criteria feminine will always be greater than existing sim system of classification you know the system of classification that was given by aristotle in the first or second video which i uh, of this series when i started on this book so um, and the knowledge in the philocentric western culture so aristotle have also some misogynistic thoughts and i shall cover them as well that how um, he has something very negative to say about women so moving towards the fifth point which is a equitory feminine can't be defined but can be conceived of by subject not subjugated to a central authority so those who can use uh, you know equitory feminine or feminine writing are not limited to just one authority they they don't obey any authority any order does not discipline them or does not rule them they are you know limitless they are multiple they have they have boundaryless boundaryless existence and expression all right so in this last sixth point because ecrotore feminine can't be conceived by those using feminine language and such language user will be on the margin or and or they can be women and outlaws or bisexuals or those who are resistors are are resisted or distanced from the center of philocentric symbolic order so i hope that you understand that because that these six points are very evident in the whole lecture series that i am starting from helene sixo delida and you know sigmund freud and lacan you just need to watch these things so the next slide is all about so this slide is all about the dramatic under the, the diagrammatic understanding of the previous slide all right so there is a center which is the phallus and penis in center and that center keeps things in order you should watch my video on derrida all right so derrida notion of center so the things that are away from the center are chaotic because the center does not influence them all right so the first ring around the center is nearer to the center <clears throat> so they are men all right they are men because they have penis and the center is can is made up of penis it because it is a patriarchal world so those who have penis are near to the center and uh, and those who are you know those those are away from the so the, those who don't have penis are away from the center and they are more you know chaotic um 
away from order they are very disordered and multiple meaning world they create all right um, the, the the world of colors all right so what is bisexuality and how bisexuality promotes and deconstruct a phallocentric order so who are in the position of thought loss bisexuals helen sexo says sexo starts by mentioning that freud who says that all human are fundamentally bisexuals and the audible tri- trajectory which steers which move both boys and girls into heterosexuality is an un- unfortunate you know a requirement of culture so sexo says that culture is always phallocentric order because entry into the symbolic realm requires a a division between masculine and feminine and feminine is always thought to be inferior is repressed and is subordinated by using slash between masculine and feminine sixo wants a new bisexuality she uses words the other bisexuality which is the other bisexuality means the refusal to exclude either of the difference of one sex or the refusal of the self slash other division to dissolve all distinctions or all differences or all binaries and that's the notion of bisexuality by sexo no distinction of sexes so that sexuality would be from any body and uh, and any part at any time that's um, so that's more like sigmund freud's concept of polymorphous perversity that all infants have uh, you know have which are organized and disciplined for society are to uh, you know that society is made by the phallocentric system so um, the bisexuality which sigmund freud think is the polymorphously perverse people and they are not normal they are abnormal but feminist theorist like helen sexo says that they are not abnormal they are different from you because you have divided thing into good and bad it doesn't mean that these people are bad because your mind has categorized them it doesn't mean that the bisexual and women and other marginal people are bad we are not responsible for what your mind think they all these binaries all these cultures all these divisions are made by your own mind all right so that was the chunk of this you know uh, slide cracks of that slide sorry so the love of the medusa the the myth of the medusa which she did discusses in this uh, essay at the last if the binary pair of the self and other is removed all other such pair will fall apart and six to says that other bisexuality will be a deconstructive force to erase clashes in all binaries with this representation of female sexuality in western culture and myth associated with womanhood will fall apart and you should watch my video on levi strauss so sixus focuses on myth of women as black hole or abyss or something very chaotic or a dark continent and the myth of medusa a woman a medusa was a woman with a uh, snakes for hair and her look turned men into stone so idea of women as a dark continent and a woman who like penis uh, is thought to be something negative and they have a scary hole and they thought that women have a scary hole uh, where their penis has disappeared and might never come back so fred you uses medusa's myth as part of the fear of castration like a woman whose hair is moving with the, a lot of penises and she is scary not because she has no penis but because she has too many penises and that's not normal for the patriarchal system and this is a kind of fear of being deceitful in men which make them to uphold 
द फेलो को सेंट रेक ऑर्डर बिकॉज मैन आर अफ्रेड ऑफ लूजिंग पीनस और हैविंग टू मैनी पीनसेस आई होप दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट स्लाइड बिकॉज एवरीथिंग इज क्रिस्टल क्लियर इन दैट सो आई डोंट हैव टू एक्सप्लेन सो मोइ टू अर्स नेक्स्ट स्लाइड विच इज सेक्स सेक्स लाइक सेक्स एंड टेक्स ऑल राइट सो नो no wear and all myths there is no description of women body in itself without the mention of penis why you associate women with not having penis there are there is a whole body of women you should talk about that as well but why are you uh, you know talking about women sexual organ and all the time so kixu sixu says that women must write about their own bodies and sexuality to tell men that they are not about penises at all she says we have to show them our sex as a new word sex is a new word that is a combination of sex and tax and the which is the idea that female sexuality as a new form of writing all right next slide is the sexus about female hysteria and you should watch my video on segment freud for that so basic idea of female hysteria was given by segment freud who who says that you know um the shifting of women first love um, a girl's first love is so a girl and boy's first love is their mother but women has to change the gender women uh, a girl has to love a male all right and second is that the original uh, you know segment freud says that the basic uh, sexual organ is clitoris or penis but as as you know all clitoris for women the masturbation of clitoris is thought to be something you know uh, uh, you know yeah, like sinful or shameful or or taboo thing kind of thing so women have to change their sex organ which was vagina so that double shifting first the shift of gender and the second the shift of sex organ created to take took too much energy and the depression the depression of these desires so desire for clitoris stimulation and desire for love of mother that was repressed in her unconscious and that took a lot of energy and in some times of time when that energy and and that energy bring hysteria in women so that was point of view of sigmund freud i have discussed that clearly in that video i will pin that uh, link in the description so for freud hysteria is the symptom of repressed ideas and the body speaks with the what the unconscious mind can't say and the and the and the unconscious thoughts are written out by the body itself but sexual idea of a clitoris feminine is similar to hysteria like the direct connection between the unconscious and the bodies as a no, as a mode of writing so uh, you have to watch the symptoms of hysteria that uh, hysteria is all about the are uh, all about the about being too much loud by their bodies and you know and they uh, that's what he six or said that they are expressing the repressed ideas to their from their bodies so the love of the medusa conclusion what's his conclusion it's a critique on fordian nuclear system that where mother father baby a uh, formation and and this genetic idea of castration and the lake that's the basic idea of the feminine in both freud and lacan analysis sixus want to break this old circuit so that the family formation which upholds the phallocentric uh, symbolic want be recreated every time a child is born so sixus says first sixus says that family system is oppressive there should be no family system and it is a limiting for both men and women female bodies pregnancies needs to be written in electore feminine and this will represent birth as something other than a separation and lake so that's the conclusion of sexus you can re- read that and you can do whatever because it's so much into that so i hope that you understand my lecture and sorry for too much noise in here thank you 
you can also subscribe to this channel you can share like and comment for further inquiry thank you